Hi, this is Christina Dubois Nugent, and I am here to talk about wrist graph overlay. Wanting to show you different ways of taking advantage of this fantastic tool, or at least the best way that I find to take advantage of it. So we're looking at Tom's Trading Room main page there. And if you want, you can go into Trades under Risk Graphs. You can actually pull up Risk Graph Overlay. However, that's only going to pull up one, some uh, the the one last trade that you looked at. So I prefer to start with Risk Graph itself. Risk Graph 2 is a bit more um, robust than Risk Graph. It takes a little longer for it to come up. So just be aware of that if you have some any kind of um, uh, issues with your uh, internet. I'm going to go ahead and pick a particular risk graph. Um, let's take a look at the Johnson & Johnson one. And I'm also going to go back in time to the date, let's say, let's start with the date of 6-4. So it's going to be a little bit within the, the life of this trade, but we're going to go ahead and take a look. Um, it's actually right before it, it, it would expire. But we'll take a look at this in, in here in just a second. So we're looking at uh, actually Johnson & Johnson. So we're going to start with that particular trade. And then y can you um, overlay two different stock charts? Yes, you can. D do I find that there's a value in that? No, not really. I like looking at either spreading strikes, like I'm going to show here, or you can look at wider versus thinner, or a different center strike or you can spread time. Uh, the easiest one really to conceptually pay attention to is spreading strike. So we're going to start with that. So the, the two that we're going to look at is the uh, 96, 100, 104, and we're going to compare that the same time period with the 98, 100, 102. So what's the difference? Well, this one has a four point strike distance on each side. This one has a two point. And I'm going to go ahead and hit overlay. So when I hit overlay, I'm going to be comparing those two particular versions of a Johnson & Johnson trade. And then we're going to take a look at what is it that we're looking at. So just get familiarized with the fact that your left trade is always going to be the trade that you were first looking at. The trade on the right, which is going to be the lighter color trade, is going to be the trade that you selected that you want it as a trade to do an overlay on. And that's what we're looking at overlay. I honestly don't use pairs, so I am not going to be speaking about that today. So based on the date of June 4th, when we're looking at these two examples, we're looking at trade candidates that are less than $1,000. So they're not um, uh, exactly the same amount. Um, but we are looking at something that's comparable to each other, saying, all right, if I'm willing to spend up to $1,000, I'm having an $880 trade, which per contract is $176, versus a $979 trade, which per contract is $89. So clearly you're going to get a lot more of these than these for less than $1,000. The left trade is the... 96, 100, 104, that's the four point strike distance. And then you can see this is a 5 by 10 by 5. At 89, or at 176 a piece, you're going to get less of them than the one that was for $89 a piece. I'm getting 11 contracts, 11 by 22 by 11 of these. But that doesn't mean more isn't always better. And this is a, a really good example of that where now that we're close to options expiration, as you can see over on the right hand side here, it's got one day left to options expiration. What you're seeing is in this particular example, you've got $72 with a 72% uh, return versus a 15% return. Where is that living in? Well, because the center strikes are the same, it's not living in the center strike. It's living in the expensive leg. This is a put, so your expensive leg is going to be the higher strike. So the 104, which is deeper in the money, went from a 250 entry fee. That's what I, ca I paid to enter this trade. Is now trading between four and a half to five dollars. So that's almost a, well, it is on the best case scenario, a 100% increase there. 
or the the um, strike that's a little closer, the 102, not as deep in the money as a put. Remember, puts are the right to sell the stock. So to sell it at 104 is better than selling it at 102. It has more value when the stock is now trading at around 99. So the 102s that you originally paid $1.88, it's made some money, and that's what we want to see. It, somewhere between 242 and 297, um, but uh, in total value, this guy definitely gave us more value, even though it had less contracts. So that's some of the things to pay attention to. Now, going back to the actual overlay discussion, what we're seeing and what we want to see is we have a left trade and a right trade. You can see that both of them have the same center strikes. The lighter colored uh, risk graph is going to be the right trade, and that one is going to look like the grays. So you can see the the orange, the light blue, the light green, and the grays. That is the uh, thinner trade. You can see it kind of lives within this thicker, if you will, wider trade. So you have a narrow trade and a wide trade. Um, always w worth um, taking a look at if you want to um, actually expand the view of this. So if you want to say, all right, I want this to actually um, uh, be a little wider, then all you have to do is go down to the bottom and change the parameter. So right now we're looking at 75 to 125. Why don't we zoom in t from 90 to 110? So you scroll down and you go 90 to 110. Now I'm going to hit overlay. And you don't necessarily have to use all the data that's out there, but what we want to do is pay attention to the information of doing a comparison. So when I look at the comparison, of the two trades again going back to the actual stock chart you can see that the gr the gray one the right one the the narrower one um it does show a little bit more profit if you hit the bullseye but you can see it's much thinner much narrower where the wider one that has the strike prices of 98 uh, excuse me the wi wider one is 96 both of them have a center strike of 100. And then the wider one has the um, wing, the buy leg on the top side at 104. So it's wider. And the difference between the wider and the narrow one, as far as profit potential, is negligible. So if you can encompass a lot more probability of stock range versus the narrow one, the wider one has a wider range and technically because of just the sheer math of how many contracts I could get that were less than a thousand dollars then you can see that I'm actually spending a little bit uh, less and so my total cost is less it's 880 versus 979 so what are the takeaways on the risk graph overlay well you're looking at the visual picture What's your probability, reward to risk that you're looking at? So your re reward potential to risk potential, the range of stock activity that you are now going to be able to live in, the wider one versus the narrow one. Taking a look at some of the Greeks information, that, and the one that I focus in on is the mid-quote one. So if I look at the mid-quote, and let's see if I can... Uh, adjust that just ever so slightly here. If I just want to look at the mid quote only and hit overlay, I don't have to have it quite as busy. So I can go in there as it refreshes here and only focus on the mid. Now I like having all three because it lets me see best and worst case scenario and when it comes to exiting, worst case scenario is really something that you want to pay attention to. So you can see that because I don't have um, the uh, all the best, worst, and mid quote, I just have mid quote here. I'm only showing um, what it would look like if I exited right at midpoint, um, right between the mid and a the bid and ask. But in reality, when it comes to exiting, it you 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 have to almost always. Um, uh, 
lean to being uh, a bit more generous on your exit. So you're going to be closer to, you're, it's going to be a bit more expensive. So you're going to be closer to the natural. Okay, natural is the most uh, more expensive version of it. So when we take a look at this, you can see um, that the the best case and worst case scenario goes from a 42 percent loss to a 102 percent return potential. Where really in the middle, it's around 46. So it's really going to be somewhere closer to this area here. Where in this example, the wider one, the uh, even worst case scenario, I'm losing 44 percent. Excuse me making 44% return versus the mid quote is 72. So you're really going to be somewhere in between that. You're definitely going to be somewhere in between that. That's what we're looking at. Um, looking at your Greeks and comparing that. So you're able to, in risk graph overlay, say, all right, who has a stronger delta? Which one is driving the bus? And a stronger delta does not necessarily mean a good thing because you can see where the dollar amounts are, but you can get a sense of where you are in relations to each of the Greeks as you look at the overlay. So hopefully that's been a good uh, r rough explanation of overlay. Very important to be able to say visually, well, wow, I contain all of the narrower example of trade inside the wider one that gives me a higher probability of range that we can take a look at. And that to me I think is critical when we're um, looking and comparing two different trades, whether butterflies, credit spreads, regular debit spreads. So thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Have a blessed day.